Ephesians church in the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32. He said, and now brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So one thing the word of God does that the word of God improves us. It builds us up. It matures us. You can stay under the radar of the word of God and remain immature. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, chapter 3, 2 Corinthians 3, verse number 18, he said, we are with open face beholding us in a glass. The glory of the Lord, he said, we are changed into the same image from, the, from glory to glory, even by, as by the spirit of the Lord. So that's a beauty of beholding the word of God. And we are on the subject of the new life. I want you to say to yourself, the new life. Now, it is important we remember and we do not neglect that you are not living the old life. Hallelujah. Is someone hearing me? Say, I'm not living the old life. Hallelujah. Say, I'm not living the old life. I'm born again. I have the new life. I'm not living a mistake life. I'm not living an erroneous life. I'm not living a corruptible life. I'm living an incorruptible life. You know the Bible said that we said that. Looking at it from our second service last Sunday, Peter 1, 23, the Bible said, being born again, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible seed, by the word of God that lived it and abided forever. And we are going to pick it from there. We've dealt so much on the subject. And we dealt with understanding the new birth, being born again. But can I talk about a resurrection life? You know, there's a life that is working in you now. It's a resurrection life. The life that suffocates fibroid, the life that suffocates cancer, the life that suffocates diabetes, and every known disease. The Bible said that inhabitants shall not say I am sick. You know why? There's a life they have. There's a life they have. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Can we get to the book of Corinthians 15 verse 35? Corinthians 15 verse 35. And we're just going to fly from there. And we're going to be reading a very long test and doing some analyticals around the test. The Bible says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? Now, it is important that we establish that all of us were dead with Christ, buried with him by baptism into death. That as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also ought to walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. But now we are reading Corinthians 15 verse 35. For all of you who have notes so that you can understand that what I'm talking to you is not Pastor Sam's word. Paul said in Corinthians 2, he said, when I came to you, I came not with enticing words of man's wisdom. He said, but with a demonstration of power. I determined not to know anything. Verse 2, among you save Christ and him crucified. I'm reading Corinthians 2 too. So we go back to where we just quoted in Romans chapter 6 verse 4. And I want us looking at that screen to make a very loud reading. Hallelujah. Want to go? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so. Do you see yourself included in that? So we walk in newness of life. We're not going to stay in the old life. Now quickly, can we go to the book of Colossians 3, verse number 9 and 10. Very beautiful. Want to go? Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10. Want to go? And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So the new man is strengthened in knowledge. So while you are hearing me, you are receiving strength. And I thank God for the month of May, the month of strength. While you are hearing me, you are receiving strength. So whatever capacity you never have, because when we talk about strength, we are dealing with capacity. So, but let's fly. Corinthians 15, 35. Glory to his word. The Bible says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? We want to know if the dead are raised with ancestral cause and generational cause. We want to know if the dead are raised with their problems that they had before. So how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Verse 36. He said, thou fool. Because when a man asks such questions and you doubt the resurrection, he calls you a fool. He said, thou fool, that without sowest is not quickened except it die. 
that without sowing is not given life except it die. Now you take note of that. If that without sowing does not receive life except it die, it means it does not stay alive with its old life. So whatever you're planting, he said it does not get quickened. It doesn't receive life. New King James Version, please. Put it there. Put it there. He said, foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. So it doesn't come alive until it dies. Meaning anything you plant has to lose its life first before it comes alive. So you must take note that if you are planted in Christ, you lost your life and you came alive. Can I hear someone say, I lost my old life. I lost the life that had my father's hereditary disease inside. I lost the life that had my mother's failure in it. I, I lost the life that had the polygamous nature of my uncles in it that have the divorce nature of my family members in it and now live a new life. Authorized version. Hallelujah. Authorized version. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be. Take note, we are looking at the anatomy of the new life now because that is what we are reading about. He said, thou sowest not that body, that shall be. But beggaring, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. So, that we thou sowest, thou sowest not that body, that shall be. Just think about it. When you plant an old corn, what do you get? Mm -hmm. You didn't answer me. The corn you planted, you saved for the next season. Was it appearing new? When you went to the farm, what you had in your hand was what? Would you enjoy if it is roasted? Would you enjoy it if you cook it? But how come it produced a new one? Now, we have to understand the metamorphosis of the old into the new. That it is actually stated in the Bible that because there is a help of God on everything that is planted, and we are going to read about this, we study it. But God gave it a body as it has pleased him. And to every seed, his own body. So, God gives it a new body. That act of giving a new body in agriculture is what your science call photosynthesis. But actually, in the realms of the spirit, is beyond the sunlight. There was a hand that shined the sun on it. No plant is able to come alive, grow, have a body without photosynthesis. If we take a natural plant in a flower vest and lock it up here, after one month, what are you going to see? A dead plant. So that act of the sun ray giving a body to that plant, he said it's not just the sun. In the realms of the spirit, he said that plant receive a body from God. This is important in understanding the resurrection. Verse number 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. There is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So he said there are different glories of different beings, species. Verse number 40. There are also celestial bodies. Can you tell someone celestial? When we say celestial, what do you think we talk about? Maybe you think of the celestial church of Christ. Beautiful. Celestial deals with spiritual. There are also spiritual bodies. And there are also terrestrial bodies. 
I know you used to terrestrial because you had your course in biology on terrestrial animals. And so you all know about land, terrestrial. There's a territory. It deals with things that you can see within your terrains. And that is talking about the natural realm. Terrestrial deals with the land, the physical, the tangible, the touchable. So you said there is a celestial body, spiritual bodies, and there are natural bodies. Now, begin to deal with spiritual, celestial also is with elevated, not reachable by natural men. So when a body is not reachable by natural men, we say it's celestial. When we say a body is reachable by natural man, we say it's terrestrial. So one deals with land and one deals with beyond. So he said, the right, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. He says, so what he call the royalty of the terrestrial and the royalty of the celestial are not the same. The beauty of the terrestrial and the beauty of the celestial is not the same. Now, we are going somewhere. For anybody who is ready to learn now, I'm taking this class bit by bit before you begin to jump. Because it's important you are established. Verse number 41. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differed from another star in glory. Can you touch your neighbor and say, I'm different from you in glory. But we know that this place was first written dealing with literal stars, sun, and moon for him to be able to analyze the resurrection to us. And he said, all of them have the free glory. Now verse 42. So also, and this begins to concern us, is the resurrection. How many of you are risen? What do you mean by your reason? Explain to your neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you know, some people may not have anything to say because there are workmen that need to be ashamed. The Bible says in the book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, he says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Meaning when a workman cannot handle the word of truth, he should be ashamed. Get us to where we are. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in corruption. It is raised so the resurrection of the dead. How many of you died? So you were sown in corruption. You were sown with your mother's sickness. You were sown with your father's disability. You were sown with a family lineage cause. But you were raised with what? No, no, no. You didn't talk like you came here. You were raised in incorruption. He said it is sown in corruption. It is raised how? In incorruption. Can I hear you say three times I'm raised in incorruption. What a beauty. Imagine you are sparkling. You are immaculate. If I say that, is it an understatement? Did I exaggerate who you are? I say you are immaculate. We are looking at the scripture and we are looking at you. We are looking at the scripture and we are looking at you. Can you look at your neighbor in incorruption and describe your neighbor to his hearing, to her hearing? Oh, oh, oh. Come on, 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 so, brothers, you could talk to someone by your side. Don't save it for the lady you want to toast. It's what the Bible says. It's not one of those flatteries of men. You are incorruptible. Glory to Jesus. 43. It is sown in dishonor. So, your father's house have particles of dishonor. 
The things you don't want anybody to hear about that you knew then and even when you pray, you make sure nobody's looking by your side to hear what you're praying about. Sown in this honor. But these people who are risen, they are raised in glory. Oh, hallelujah. Your shames are gone. That's what the Bible means. Touch your neighbor say, no more shame. You are raised in glory. Tell your neighbor say, you are raised in glory. No more shame. No more dishonor. Whatever mistake was in your father's house, they are not with you anymore. Glory to Jesus. Now we got to get it. Listen, every family of the earth has a problem. But every family from above is immaculate. And you are from above. I say you are from above. I say you are from above. You know, when you talk, it means you are learned. There are spiritual learnings. He said, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. Sown in weakness. There are different adequacies. Let a believer not say I have a weakness. No, it is sown in weakness. It is raised how? <laughs> it is raised how? So where is your weakness? It's gone. It has been sown. <laughs> it was sown. <laughs> you were raised in power. That's the language of the believer. And you say, oh, oh, what are you saying? What are you saying? Then you have to listen to my last Wednesday service. Uh, I, I told you something. Is it two Wednesdays ago? I said, well, last Wednesday, so, 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 activity everywhere. Is it last Wednesday we said? It doesn't matter. It's about the atmosphere of it. The moment you're planted, everything is good. Verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised. So you will raise a spiritual body. So I'm a spiritual body. Touch your neighbor, Sam, a spirit. So you're no longer a natural body. You are what? You are no longer a natural body. So I'm no longer a natural body. So I'm not controlled by natural elements. I'm not under natural laws anymore. I'm no longer a natural body. I'm a spiritual body. It's a son a natural body. You came into Christ in natural body. But now you are. That's why I say if any man be in Christ is a new creature. But things should pass away. Behold all things. I become new. Then he said there is a natural body. Why did he emphasize on this one? It is soul and flesh. It's raised spirit. There is a natural body. There is a spiritual body. There is a natural body. I won't talk about natural body. Natural is with limitations. Natural bodies have sizes. You can say I'm not too tall. You can say I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not slim. You can say I'm not fat. Natural body has some descriptions. I can't be here. I can't be there. Natural body has limitations. Natural body gets to a place, a door is locked, he stands outside and he knocks, waiting for someone to open. Spiritual body is event. He says he's sown in natural body. Have you not read the book of John? The Bible says why the door was closed. Jesus entered. Do you know that that's enough message for one year? Why the door was closed? You bought a car. Why the door was closed? You bought a land. Why all that said the door was closed? That's where you raised the building up. Enough message. Look at what we're reading in Corinthians. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, 
was made a living soul. The living soul is, he was a receiver of life. Then he said, the last Adam was made what? A quickening spirit. The quickening spirit was made a life-giving spirit. You have to understand it. One can give life, the other received life. Which are you? Which are you? Which are you? You know, you know when you don't know the word of God and you see yourself or you know the word of God and you see the people who don't know the word of God, these kind of words are blasphemy. You say, I'm a life-giving spirit. They say, eh, what kind of church do you go to? Why are you challenging equality with God? You hear things like that. It is because they don't know the word of God. I'm a member of the Godhead. You will soon die. You mean you said you're a member of the Godhead? How can you be a member of the Godhead? Is God the Father? Is the Son and the Holy Spirit? What do you mean by a member of the Godhead? They didn't know that things happened. The Son died. To raise sons. John 3.16 is bigger than what it is now. Jesus is not the only begotten anymore. The language actually changed. He's now called the first begotten, not the only begotten. (laughs) It takes a student of the scripture to understand. That if you say that the Trinity is God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Son, the Son, the Son, the Son, and you are in the Son, and you are seated with the Son, The height of the love of God is that man, mankind, became God kind. And the Trinity. Was modified. So much for us to discuss from the scripture. So that you begin to understand what he says. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and scorpions. And nothing shall by any means. Who are they? It's because mankind sown the natural body is raised the spiritual body. They are no longer normal people. Seated here are different spirits. Hallelujah. There are different spirits seated. The person next to you is a spirit being. A complete spirit. Hallelujah. Just imagine, look look around your neighbor, just turn again and look. It's a spirit. Is a spirit. Is a spirit. Is a spirit. It's all over your Bible. And it's all over the world that a spirit is seated there. That is why you can't live in the natural life anymore. That's why we say don't burn your time in club, in spirits, don't club. Is a spirit. The Bible says God is a spirit. And he says, as he is, so are we in this world. He's a spirit. You are a spirit. How did you come about? That which is born of the spirit is spirit. 
It's a spirit. Put that scripture on the screen. Let's go on. Habit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. So you talk about the first Adam, a living soul. He said that one was the first. It was the natural that was first. It was the natural that God corrected. And afterward, that which is spiritual, verse 47. Hallelujah. The first man is of the earth. No, no, you didn't say it like you saw it. The first man is of the earth. Are you of the first man? Yeah, some people say I'm the son of the soil. Don't you know I'm the son of the soil? Poor you. You know, when people don't, when people lack knowledge, they say nonsense. He said, the second man is. No, no, you didn't, you didn't read it like you saw it. The second man is what? The first man is what? Eti. Dust to dust. The second man is what? Is the Lord. John chapter 3 verse 31. We're coming back here. Can we read together? So you see the advantage and the limitations? The one that is from the earth, is, is, is he above all? The one that is from above, from heaven, is, is he? So understand the characteristic, the characteristics of the one from above. Then you choose the one to be. Above all, above financial crisis. Above limitations, above, 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 above every form of satanic onslaught on earth. We go back to where we're reading, verse 47. The first man is of the earth, Eddie. The second man is the Lord from heaven, verse 48. As is the earthy, such are they that are earthy. So those who are not born again are still susceptible, subject to a whole lot of elements. What they fear is not what we fear. What happens to them doesn't happen to us. I don't know how believers can come to embrace this. You know, during those COVID year. How some believers were in panic and in fear. And they felt that we are unintelligent not to put on masks. They feel like we will soon die and they will stay alive. For holding service and going to church. Even some pastors never laid hands anymore. What do we say, Anna? Who do we blame when someone is not knowledgeable in God's word? What do you think? Growth is not available for such people. The Bible said the new man is renewed in knowledge. Meaning without the knowledge of God's word, the new man is not empowered. So the power of the new man is in the knowledge of God's word. And look at what we're reading. Hallelujah. And as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. So even if you're born again and you don't have this knowledge, you will be living. Even with a lion body like a cockroach. Because the knowledge you still have in your head is the cockroach knowledge. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Can you think about it? Just the way Jesus is, is how you are. You're a champion. You are a champion. You are strong. You are better. You're wiser. You're confident. You're bold. Oh, success. You are success. And successful. Anywhere, anytime, any day. You are deity. Look at what the Bible says. As is in heavenly, such are they also that are. There are things we look at, and the next thing is, the question is, how do you feel after looking at it? 
beginning to realize that you are from heaven and you are heavenly, you are above all because he that is from heaven is above all. It means you are above all because he says, as is in heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. So it means you are above all. You know, I think I want to start now. But I have to stop here. Because actually, this is the beginning. Think about it now. You are above all. So what are your fears? Why do you wake up ever worried? You are above all. You are above barrenness. You are above living and never getting married. So the fear of not getting married, no man coming is gone because you are above it. You are above begging for bread. Think about it. You are above death. Think about it. Some of you are so scared anywhere, you get into a car. If the driver ever accelerates past 100, that's how your heart will start beating. You can even fall sick for fear. I mean, people travel three hours and they, they pray in tongues for three hours. That's not fellowship. The, what they are praying is because, you know, I don't know. And then kidnappers, good loves, I don't know. Jesus, 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 I don't know. Accident. You, I, I mean, you died many times. Like, like Shakespeare she, she, would say, coward died many times before they're dead. You died many times. You get into the airplane, there's a little strong, and for any reason, the plane ever shake, your heart jumps to your mouth. You never enjoy the fun of flights or the fun of road trip because you think you will die anytime. You have been delivered. By your head and keep God praise. Trust that you've been blessed by this broadcast. To order for the complete series of this message, please call the numbers now displayed on your screen. If you have not received Jesus into your heart, you can do so now as you repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. I believe you died to save me and was raised up for my justification. I declare you the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life because I believe. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me, congratulations, you are now born again. You can advance in your spiritual walk with God as you fellowship with any faith-based church around you. Usher with us at Salvation Gospel Mission International Headquarters, number 10 to Ways Up Street of Naval Sarada, Saba Delta State, Nigeria. Salvation Gospel Mission International.